Hey man, how's it going? Hey, sorry about that. Like I was in the middle of eating supper. Yeah, no, I I apologize. I'm interrupting your dinner. Did you finish? <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, we had some pizza, some vegetable pizza. So I was just trying to finish eating up there. Nah, that sounds delicious. Yeah, it was pretty good. It's Jonathan. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, how you doing, lady in the background? <laughs> Naomi. Naomi. Hello, Naomi. Uh, what did you say? Uh, what did you say? I don't know. I'm thinking What did you say? I said hello. Oh. Howdy. Howdy, howdy. There I wanted to read all these new reforms that Colorado just uh, passed, and then the, if anything, you know, strikes your fancy that you're like, hey, I want to talk about that, just see where the conversation goes. All right, all right. So the, the three biggest things, the new law requires that all police in Colorado have body cameras by June 1st, 2023, and then all the unedited... What? Yeah, and then the unedited footage from the body cameras must be released to the public within 21 days of the filing of misconduct complaints. So I feel like we got body cameras here in Colorado, in this county, but I feel like there's probably small towns, and then the fact that they uh, say that unedited footage, I don't know, I think it's pretty good. There's uh, they're in qualified immunity. Are you familiar with qualified immunity? I think it's even worse than that. It just it's specific immunity to uh, like case. It's it's weird. It's Supreme Court stuff, but it's like because the state is sovereign, and therefore the police are sovereign too if they you know mess up. And uh, immunity, like immunity, so if they, you know, kill a person, ah, you're immune. <laughs> Get on out of here, you. Well, it's sort of like a diplomatic immunity where we send an emissary to another country. You know, <laughs> if I uh, get drunk and get naked on top of my fucking car in Germany, because they, you know, that German beer will fuck you up. <laughs> they, they, they do that in Hollywood. I've seen that in movies. Does that actually work in real life? <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you go to Germany. Yeah, that's what happens, man. Yeah, the other thing, the a big thing that the grand juries now under the law will be required to release reports when they decide against charging officers accused of murder. I feel like this is the biggest way that they use the system to bury. The idea of a grand jury is that you don't want to just pass out felonies to anybody and everybody. So it's to protect you and me from, uh, you know, sort of um, just random, whatever, just frivolous, you know, uh, 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 accusations of felonies. So the grand jury, it goes to the grand jury, then they say whether or not there looks like there might be a crime, and then it goes to the actual court. So the grand jury is not even really a jury or a court. It's like the court before the court. So anyways, uh, a lot of times a police officer were, what? It's, it's an indictable jury. In other words, like, it, it's in right. order to see if they have enough evidence to go to court with kind of thing. Exactly. It's just a jury's office. That's the thing that they have enough evidence, logical evidence, that they can take you to a court of law. I'm going to a grand jury. It's called an indictable jury. Right, right, exactly. So they can indict you, and then after they indict you, then there's the real trial, right? Then there's court. Right. But what qualifies as evidence? I mean, are we just talking circumstantial evidence, or are we talking physical DNA? I mean, there's the, the, there's a list, a laundry list. Ability to the, the community 
ability of the different evidence. The with the depends on what the crime that say, for instance, like you take me when I was doing my job. Yeah. You would call me in to go in front of the jury through a trial, not through the indictable jury. But after the person was indicted. <clears throat> Then they would ask me the questions. I would go through the chain of command. I would give them the evidence that I am out. Right. But it then all depends on what kind of a crime you're talking about. If you're talking about felonies, federal, you're talking about state. You're talking about you know, murder, capital punish, capitally punishable offenses, I guess. Right. The more serious the crime, the more apple code that they will take it in front of an individual. So basically what they're saying is, is that if a cop, you know, infringes on someone else's rights or liberties or freedoms, then they would have to go there then before a grand jury. Mm -hmm. and, and that's federally. Now, is that correct? Uh, no, this is uh, the state of Colorado. So the grand jury now, under the new law, they're saying that they have to release the report when they decide against charging officers accused of murder. So instead of burying it in the grand jury, the brand new law says that if they do try to bury it, they got to have a report about, you know, what was talked about, what was discussed. Typically, it's all private. It's prosecutor. The DA takes everybody and, you know, tries to get these indictments and uh, they don't they never have to add they never have to answer for anything that they um that they yes ma'am yeah i mean it, I'm talking about the new law, too. It's a brand new Colorado law. Well, I was just basically saying that there's like three main things. The body cameras and then qualified immunity and the grand juries have to report. So... The way I see it, and I think it's a genius, I think it's very smart, because if you don't know the system, then it looks like, oh, a grand jury looked at it, and they said that there is no wrongdoing, but it's not exactly like that. So they bury it in the grand jury. They didn't get an indictment, and now the cop walks free. But with this law, it says they got to release the report. So they got to, I don't know exactly what they have to tell, but I would think they probably have to tell, like, the evidence and what was discussed and what was talked about without really... Yeah, just a cop, just a cop, just a cop, they said, accused of murder. So just a cop only when he's accused of murder. Very specific situation. Yeah. When the cop gets charged, the first thing that he's supposed to do is keep it out of justice. Yeah. What do you all think is the biggest problem? What's the biggest problem do you see all with the police? Like I've I've never had like an actual encounter with a, like a good like hey that that guy did this to me you need to go catch him okay I got gotcha. you I've never had that kind of experience my good experience is just I didn't get fucked over <laughs> a cop pulled me over and he let me go okay so you know something like that so um. Well, I'm asking you, just uh, cops, 
uh, what uh, what do you think is the biggest problem with the police? Lack of accountability for one. Like if if I went and performed at a job like some cops perform at their jobs, I would be out. I would have never had a fucking job. But I mean, that just that's the first thing. It, it has, somebody has to hold them fucking accountable for shit like this. For anything, they, I mean, even, like, for, like, uh, drinking and driving and stuff, if they end up getting fired, like, the police union, they get, like, their butts covered, so it's almost like you, they're untouchable and they're above, they're above the law. It's the thin blue line thing. That, uh, yeah. The thin blue line is ridiculous. Yeah, go ahead. I worked at the ME's office. Yes, sir. I have a pathology degree. Okay. I'm a pathologist by training. Cool. I lost my job because I was fired. When I was trying to have an evidence where there was none. They didn't want me to go ahead and ask this guy. They didn't want him to go me. They didn't care how they did it. And I refused. And so I got fired. Huh. And the cops. That were on the case, didn't care who they hurt in the process of getting this guy indicted or found guilty in a court of law. But I've also been on the other side of the gamut. Right. Where if that wasn't for cops, I wouldn't be alive sitting here talking to you today. So you had an experience where the cops saved you? They saved your life? Yeah, they did. Nice. And then for the cops breaking down my door and getting me medical help. I wouldn't be here. Nice. That's awesome. Um, that That's... was after my ex-husband broke my back mm. and busted my jaw in three places and tore my rotator cuff and ruptured my spleen. Jesus and, Christ. And um, it hadn't been for the cops, because he locked the door when he left. It hadn't been for the cops breaking the door in. I wouldn't be here. I would say it can't be a good thing, but like, it depends on your location. Like In these bigger cities, like up in Mayapolis, Places like that, man. I mean, there's always it's a, it's a class thing. It's not so much. I don't think so much a race thing. But it's a class thing. You're, it's the rich versus the poor, and that kind of. Thing. I can tell you honestly, in Minnesota, I've been there. I've lived in both North and South Minneapolis. No, uh, North Minneapolis is called the war zone, and it's, it's, it's specifically named that because it is. It's class warfare. And it's all it is, is class warfare. I mean, it depends on where you're rolling from, I guess. But, like, I've, I've been in neighborhoods where cops wouldn't even go in that neighborhood. You know, it's crazy. You want to go in that neighborhood, you know, whatever fuck you want. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, I mean, isn't that crazy, though? They're, they have state power, so they have, like, all the authority and, you know, force in the world to go, and they won't even do it. But you just think of uh, George Floyd, there are... Living circumstances with this murder. Uh, I would. I no. I would charge him with capital murder. Yeah, I would too. I, I would charge him with that slaughter. Hell no. Oh yeah. Hell no. Hell, hell no. I would charge him with capital murder. They banned chokeholds. Um, because of the history that the two of them had, um, and the altercations that they had prior to this particular incident, um, you can see it on the face of the cop. He wasn't going to release his knee. He wanted the guy dead. And he didn't do shit. Unfortunately, the other two cops that were behind the car that were holding him down... Didn't the, the Minneapolis Police Department get defunded? Didn't they? Mm -hmm. There has been almost 20 murders in the last 24 hours. Shootings, actually. It's so cold and cold. We're going back to the Civil War now, guys. We're going back to the Civil War. Um, in South Minneapolis, um, and, um, I lived with her for a year. She slept with an unmarked revolver under her pillow because of the location that she was at. She was at 38, no, what, 38, I don't know what the gun was, or not there, what was that one? Colorado was, uh, concealed carry in it. Colorado is mixed. Colorado is very mixed. There's castle law. They have castle law, so you can defend your house from, you know, a break-in. 
and uh, but they also have red flag laws too. So it seems like the, it's in the Constitution that you have a right to uh, bear arms, but then also the Colorado Constitution. So it's kind of mixed. They have a make make my day law too, which is uh, kind of the same thing. Uh, the castle law. If if they come in your house. There's two things. If they're coming into onto your property or into your house, you have to uh, assume criminal intent, and it could be a Jehovah's Witness, right? So you gotta you can find out what they're doing. Right, but I'm talking about like your situation, like where you're at. See, I don't know, like you sound like you're more like in Southern Colorado. It looks fucking gorgeous out there. I'd love to go out there on a clear night. Get my telescope out, just fucking gaze at the stars all night. That's, that looks pretty nice. Yeah, that it's perfect, perfect for that. That has uh, the big dippers in my face all the time, and uh, the whole universe is actually staring at me. So I wish I knew more about stars and constellations and stuff like that. Doctor Chad, he's the expert. Oh man, there's all kinds of guys that you can watch on YouTube with naked bite-sized videos, so you're not you're not watching an eight-hour documentary on it or whatever. But uh, yeah, I, I did that stuff as I was a kid. But yeah, it looks like a. It looks beautiful out there. Are you in Southern Colorado then, or where are you at out there? Uh, Castillo County, yeah, Southern Colorado. It's in the San Luis Valley. It's the the highest mountain valley in the world, apparently. It's actually like a, a thousand feet higher than Denver. <laughs> yeah, the, the elevation difference out there is quite. It, it, it's pretty noticeable. Like I've been at sea level most of my life. I go out there and I'm like. Are popping and shit. It's uh, it's gorgeous views though. Not only does it the universe and all the stars, but I got the Ute Mountain to the south and the Blanca Mountain to the north, and then the Cristo, the Sangre de Cristo Mountains on the east, and then some Pinion Hills on the on the west. Kiowa Hill, like little they they're big hills, but they're compared to the mountains. It's so yeah, it's kind of, it's a beautiful scenic. Uh, it's a cold, windy desert. So you know, don't let me um say it's uh, any better than that, but it's, uh, it's, I think, I feel like I got a little slice of heaven, and I could see this being developed, it's right next to the Rio Grande, and, uh, because it's, like, so outdoors, it just makes you want to, like, go mountain climbing, and, uh, you know, backpacking, and just go down the river, go kayaking, just do, you know, things, so... I, I, what I do, the first thing I do before I went out there, this is just how I take like, I would go and I'd find, like, uh, aerials of the area, and I'd, like, find, I'd go to the, like, you got a library around there. Yeah. That'd be where I would go. And I'd find out, like, historically, areas of significance, like, you, uh, those uh, drawings that you found, those were pretty, pretty cool. I'd find stuff like that, and I'd go, uh, check, there's probably, uh, Gold Rush ghost towns out there, all kinds of fucking shit down that southern part of Colorado. Yeah, there's a... There's a Mormon ghost town. He has a he has a gate, but he doesn't have a fence for it. And he doesn't need a fence. He uh, can, they got a castle law out there. He doesn't need a fence. All but, he has to do is go and get those signs so that no trespassing. Yeah, still get a no trespassing sign. The moment they step foot on the driveway, it's trespassing. And if you get a gun made before a certain time period, like an old Colt would work, like a revolver. Then you're allowed to go apply to black powder and on your hand. Yeah, well, you won't have to register your firearm that way. That's another loophole that they don't tell you about. Nah, that's good stuff. <laughs> I believe in being armed. I don't have a firearm myself, but that's something that's, uh, that's on our list of things to do. Maybe uh, traveling will be maybe in my future. I don't know. I might come out there to visit at some point because it does look nice out there. And I've been out, I've been to Colorado Springs. I see you look like you're in the middle of fucking nowhere. I was in the middle of projects up in the city and shit. <laughs> um, I was talking to Adam, Adam uh, Marcus. Uh, he's a movie director, the Hollywood type, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, she uh, was talking about this police thing, and I was like, you know, uh, I lived out in the projects. I told him, I said, sit, sit around, boys and girls. It's time for Uncle Sam, the boogeyman, to tell everybody a story. I said, so I used to live out in the projects in Colorado Springs. And I said, well, what was it? Uh, 
Well, well, yeah, I look out the window, and there's this guy, there's a parking lot, like, behind our building. There's a big parking lot back there. Mm-hmm. Fucking pipe snake in the background behind it and shit. Hmm. So, I look out the window, I'm up in my room or whatever, and I see these cops, and they surround this guy. And by the time I realized what the fuck was going on, it was too late for me to go for it. I was up on the third floor, right? So, like, I didn't have my shoes on or nothing. You know, well, can I make it down there before they fucking beat him to death? No, probably not. Now, I wanted to help him. I felt bad. But by the time I realized what was going on, it was, you know, I, I, I was better off letting him die. You know what I mean? No, that's traumatic, man. That's crazy. It, it's, it's fucked up, man. Like, I did call in. I did report it, okay? I told Adam this. I'm sorry. I'm telling this to Adam and everybody. Let me get a little cynical chance to tell you guys the story here. So I call into the cops. This is like 1.30 in the fucking morning and shit. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you guys have got uh, like five officers. Like, this guy's dead. Like, they're beating him to death. They're still beating on him. Like, I'm trying not to get physically sick up here. Uh, and they're like, you didn't see nothing and hung the phone up on me. You know, like, that was just, you know, it's not that kind of thing. You didn't see it. the ambulance rolls up. They don't got their lights on. No shit like that. Like, it was the most fucked up thing. What? It's on the top five of the most fucked up things I've ever seen with my own two eyes. So. Yeah, no, that's terrifying. Because, like, what what do you do? You feel a uh, moral obligation, but can you take on the system all by yourself? Well, it wasn't even so much that for me. I was like, by the time I got down there, it wouldn't have mattered, you know? Right. <laughs> it happened so quick, you know? It's just like... It was kind of crazy. I was only halfway paying attention to it, you know? And then I kind of noticed it. I'm like, oh, man. So, it was fucked up out there, man. I... People be shooting Uzi's off in the fucking parking lot at 3 o'clock in the morning and shit. Uh, it's all kinds of fun out there. It's actually kind of weird how really a lot of the bullshit only, it's only a couple of seconds of, you know, sort of insanity, and then most of the time it's pretty peaceful. I mean, it was, it was chill out there, but, like, I kind of had a lot of big city problems to it that I didn't like, but... How long were you in Colorado Springs? Uh, seven, eight months, somewhere around there. I, I just feel, I've never had a good experience with the cops, so I feel like people want to look at me and say, okay, white man, you got all this privilege, and sure, I got white privilege, and then people have black privilege, and there's male privilege, and female privilege, and there's also, you know, um, sexism and racism, and it goes, you know, all over the direction, you know, all over the place. Right. So I feel like I... Yes. I don't, I, I don't call the cop for anything unless it's out of my hands. So I feel like I would rather them not be around. I don't like the police. They will fuck me over for something petty, you know, speeding or, or seatbelt or whatever. And uh, they'll fuck me over for something tiny and petty just because, you know, they're the bullies of the society. But when it comes to actually getting the bad guy who did this and do that, I just, there's just so many bad things that I've gone through. That uh, when I, you know, mention it, like, just, I don't know, home invasion, property damage, you know, there's, it just, like, what what does it have to take for them to give a damn? I don't really want to wait. I don't really want to see what, like, if, what, do I have to be killed, right? Do I have to, my house have to be burned down? Do I have to get, you know, raped and... No, I, I get your concern with it, but, like, uh, I don't know, like, where you're at, like, is what I'm saying. Like, it sounds like a lot smaller town kind of kind of attitude there? Uh, the, I actually don't know much about the Castillo County Sheriff's Department, who would be the local police around here. Uh, every time I've gone to them, like, they're always nice and cordial, but then they'll say a couple things, like this, the house next door got burnt down, and they came out here because I called them, you know, 45 minutes later, and then I went out there, I was like, do you want a, a wit- you know, witness statement? Do you want to know what I saw? And he just like, what do you think happened? <laughs> And it was like, how freaking rude. And uh, what do you mean, what do I think? I'm the only person that saw, I'm not, you wouldn't be out of here if it wasn't for me. <laughs> and so it's like, damn, uh, you know. And then um, uh, this uh, other time, it's just, I feel like it's laziness almost. It's like, there's probably a, a ton of reasons why a cop won't take up your case or take up, you know, what has happened to you. Maybe they don't know you. Maybe they don't believe you. 
maybe they're corrupt, maybe they're in cahoots with, you know, the criminals, but I feel like laziness is, like, the biggest, it's like, they would rather not do something than do something, and so, I just can't get them to, like, this thing, if, if it happened to me, if, a, if what happened to me happened to a police officer, say with the dog, if the a police officer saw a vehicle driving all over the place and just looking like they're harassing you, and then kill your dog and then drive off, like, that's, there's no way that cop doesn't go after him, chase him, arrest him, do something about the damn thing. And um, and if they don't do it, then I'm just stuck. I'm just like, okay, well, the you know, it makes me wish we had like crime fighters, actual crime fighters, not police. I don't I don't care. Like defund the police all the way. Uh, they come out forty. The old west was known for vigilantism. I mean, you know, there's always that possibility. You could kill Batman with it. The whole. No, that's, I guess what I'm saying is the cops kind of don't allow you to be a vigilante. I feel like if, I don't know, I, I don't know if it's my luck or just maybe it's my, I got a nice, pleasant, lawful face, so it's easier to harass me. But I, I feel like, okay, he ran over my dog. What if I, you know, chased him down, pulled him out of the truck and beat him up? Am I going to jail for assault or uh, are they going to say, oh, okay, well, shit, he ran over his dog. Of course he's allowed to do something like that. You know, there again, there was another situation that, like, out in Colorado Springs, uh, we were sitting there one night, and it, there was this, this fucking pickup truck full of guys from Mexico. You knew they were fucking illegal. They were driving a vehicle drunk, probably didn't have a license, and so on and so forth. Well, they hit somebody else out front of the building head on, like, fucking head on, cracked. You heard the fucking shit, it, it echoed. So that was the time where I did throw the shoes on and go downstairs. And, like, I ran into the cops because, you know, somebody else had reported it, I guess. And uh, I ran into them. I'm the first one they run into. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I see these Mexican guys do this. And they get out of the truck and walk away like nothing happened. So I was like, I'm going to find these Mexican guys. And I'm going to beat the ever living fucking dog piss out of them. And that cop just looked at me. He was a big male cop, and uh, was like a smaller female cop, and they sort of looked at me and said, okay, you can go on. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what are doing their job for them and shit, you know? Maybe that's what they need is just that, that example. And I feel like maybe that's like a problem too is like you got to look him in the eye and say, do your damn job. And then, you know, and I feel like am I going to get arrested or beat up? Hey, don't you disrespect. Don't look me in the eye. Don't argue with me. I feel like that's. That's always kind of been my experience. So I feel like this shit ain't happening right now, this second, right? The bank robbery in progress. They'll show up, you know, an hour late, and they, they won't catch the guys. They won't make a real report. They won't make a real... And that's bullshit. That's bullshit. I, I, I'm not allowed to get vigilante justice because they're around, and I feel like they'll fuck me over. <laughs> it's like I'm, you know, it's uh, it sucks. It's like I can't go left or right. Damned if I do, damned if I don't. Right. Yeah, and that's shitty that they don't do much for the like. But uh, without the police where you're at, because maybe I feel like they're human, and so perhaps it's just I just don't know them and they don't know me, so maybe I got to go to socials and network or some shit and maybe. Here, here the, locally, the, I think the guy just became chief of police, but he knows this because of we took care of her roommate Karen. She's a brittle, brittle diabetic, so every time her blood sugar would spike or crash, we would have to call the uh, EMS and to come and get her, you know, so she, we could keep her alive. So the cops would come in a lot, and we got to know these guys on first name basis and shit like that. So when my kid, the kid, I don't even want to bring up the kid thing. I mean, it's Father's Day. I'm not even going to bring the fucking kid thing up. Long story short, the, their grand, her grand, her grandmother and her mom basically tried to weaponize the cops on me. Unfortunately for them, the guy knew me, and it didn't work out, work out to their advantage. And the cops that they brought to fucking harass me with ended up yelling and screaming at them for being stupid. So. Awesome. No, that's a good turnaround. So. It does happen. That's what I'm trying to say here. It does happen. Um, one of the things I did, like I used to go to... I, when I was a kid, I'd go to garage sales all the fucking time in the summertime. A couple summers ago, I went to some garage sales, yard sales, just find old shit or whatever. I found uh, it, was a, it was a metal thermos. It was a Batman thermos, that's what it was. Now, when you're dealing with 
like law enforcement. Like, again, I've been to jail. I know how this show works. <laughs> so <laughs> what I do is, like, I try to show non-verbally to them that I'm not a threat and that 